This definite integral, first of all, we can pretty much give up on finding its antiderivative, because just from the looks of it, I doubt if there is an elementary antiderivative. But somehow, if we make the substitution x equals half pi minus t, then dx becomes negative dt. When x is equal to 0, t will be equal to half pi. And when x is equal to half pi, then the boundary becomes, becomes 0. So the original integral equals, equals half pi to 0. Of course, there's a negative sign coming out. Right, negative of square root of sine x becomes half pi minus t. And square root sine half pi minus t plus square root of cosine half pi minus t minus t and dt and of course that's equal to just get rid of negative sign change the boundaries 0 to half pi All right, switch the boundaries and we have the square root of sine of half pi minus t becomes cosine t and likewise the square root of sine half pi minus t becomes co cosine t plus the square root of this becomes sine t we trigger identity dt and since since t is just dummy variable like if we change t consistently throughout uh, into x we have exactly this cosine x square root of cosine x plus square root of sine x then dx and that's exactly the original integral as well right so if we add them together right, twice of i will become right, the same boundaries right? same boundaries just add up the top right? <coughs> square root of sine x plus square root of cosine x square root of uh, cosine x plus square root of sine x right, same thing right, so that becomes 0 to half pi dx right. so that's exactly half pi so i is in fact pi over 4